<laughs> okay, thank you, Paul. We're gonna jump right into our next. Um, we're gonna jump right into our next presentation. Uh, Dr. Teresa Matina is our next presenter. Uh, she has been studying both Jacobson syndrome and 11 q um, duplications for many, many years. Uh, Dr. Martina was an associate professor of medical genetics at the University of Catania in Italy. She retired in October of 2021, and since October of 2021, she has served as a medical geneticist at the Morgani Research Foundation and Clinic in Catania, Italy. Um, more related to her 11Q experience, I'm still getting up. Uh, since December of 1993, she has seen 228 deleted or 11Q deletion and trisomy. So that's probably more than anyone in the world, right? I would, I would think so. Um, she's had more than two, 200 questionnaires with families and interviews, um, and more than 40 patients follow up uh, within the last follow up lasting from two to 30 years. So there's some patients she's been following for 30 years. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, we'll turn the time over to Teresa. Um, I hope you forgive my English. I will jump this. Um, the uh, the hope uh, the way I wanted to study my patients is to collect information from patients uh, visiting and uh, with the uh, questionnaire gain some knowledge of uh, genomic disorder within eleven Q and be able to support families. And uh, to collect information, uh, all the patients uh, with 228 have been visited, and most of them have, have given me a questionnaire with uh, all the answers to the questions mm -hmm. I put. So clinical evaluation, photos, and questionnaire and clinical follow-up when possible. This is to get a clinical diagnosis, but also I want to get a complete genetic diagnosis. And this is obtained by updating genetic tests. Um, so uh, I created a, da a database with clinical information uh, this database is being shared by Phenomizer. I don't know if you know this uh, public site for diagnosis of genetic disorder. Um, so they will go through the Phenomizer. Um, I, I have to compare clinical information from, from patients with the same unbalance or similar unbalance and get, get to know what you should expect from a child with uh, 11Q division. And if we find something unusual, uh, try to understand why there is some additional problem. Um, to get the information with uh, regard to genetics is to update uh, clinical uh, genetics uh, information with the most advanced techniques so that we have uh, the correct breadth point and if possible find conditions that predispose to breadth. Uh, so I could be able to provide information on the natural history of the disorder, which are the problems that we have to be faced and how to talk to them and providing information for the uh, recurrence risk within the family, because this is important to the healthy children in the family. So first of all, I want to um, make a point. Uh, what is Jacobson syndrome? It's a partial chromosomal division. So there is a loss 
of a piece of chromosome. And on clinical ground, the effect is towards all of the body, everything from top to top. Traditional cardiotype would be able to detect large deletions, but uh, when it comes to smaller deletion, it may be difficult to be sure that the division is there. And in these cases, uh, stain with fish, in here you see, you can see the red spot is missing from one chromosome 11. That means that the tip of chromosome 11 is missing. So this was how we made the diagnosis before 2005. The traditional karyotype is unable to detect small amounts and the red point may be incorrect. So if any of you has old chromosome test, might be worth going through updating the diagnosis. You see, sometimes I read on Facebook or I'm asked, my child is within two uh, Q2, three point three, as though it was a definition. It is uh, 6,700 veins large area. There are many bleeds. So a break within Q23.3 doesn't tell me anything. And especially if you don't say it is a loss, a gain within chromosome, that chromosome, from that chromosome region to the end. So you must be precise. If you want to ask a question, you must be precise on the genetics. Get a complete diagnosis now, you use array. Array tells you precisely where the loss or gain is. It does tell you if there is a contemporary uh, a gain of another chromosome, another part of chromosome. And if you use SNP array, you would know which parent has given the wrong chromosome. That might, might be useful for a complete diagnosis. But the array is unable to detect balanced anomaly, is not useful for parents. And that could be detected goose, variant of a known significance. It means that there are variants, amount of DNA lost or gained and we don't know if there is any clinical effect due to it. So variants of unknown significance. So array gives you some information, gives you some questions. Is a boost important in my child? And does it allow identification of balanced anomalies? So any test alone, chromosomes or array would be incomplete or give even incorrect information. Karyotype gross definition of breakpoint, misdiagnosis, does not identify some complex karyotype. Array would be missing all balanced anomalies and would identificate anomalies that we cannot understand uh, the meaning of that. Until the 2005, only chromosome fish was done. After 2005, it, we used to refine chromosome abnormality via array. Nowadays, array is performed the test and usually the only test. Chromosome first, after the detection of an anomality, array maps the breakpoint. If, but if no abnormality is detected, the array was not performed because chromosomes were normal. So we could have a 
the time uh, a large division and a small division would not be seen because a ray would only be performed if there was a wrong chromosome test. And uh, what I found uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, conference in Germany that about a half of the cases I saw, new cases that came for Jacobson syndrome, in fact had division 11Q, but also duplication of a piece of 11Q. So deletion and duplication 11Q is more common than I ever supposed. What, why is that? Is a new condition? No, I think it's a condition that was not diagnosed. Because in these patients, we have an interstitial duplication plus a terminal deletion of chromosome 11. But chromosomes look normal. And even if we use, the, there is a deletion, a piece is duplicated, if you look at the microscope, they look equal, they look normal. And if you do chromosome painting by fish, it's all chromosome 11. There is no additional different chromosome on the tip of 11. So it wouldn't be detected. We wouldn't make a ray on this case. But you, if you start by a ray, you find them, and because nowadays you start by array, you see these cases of 11Q deletion and duplication. This is chromosome 11. This is a deletion. This is a duplication. Sometimes the one chromosome 11 is deleted and duplicated. In some instances, you have a, a mosaic some cells have deleted chromosome 11, other cells have a duplicated chromosome 11. I'm not going to tell you how it happened, but it is frequent. So uh, with array first, you see gross and subtle chromosomal imbalances. You see so subtle uh, imbalances that can be considered meaningless, so small, no gene within the region, but balanced rearrangements are not identified. So if you do array in parents, you usually find them normal. Balanced rearrangements are not identified. Very small copy number variation are considered meaningless. Look at this. This is one of my patients. He had a messy karyotype. If you see uh, there, there is an exchange, a multiple exchange between chromosomes. And uh, the patient had a, a severe condition. He was born after a prenatal diagnosis with the ray, and the ray was normal. Only there was a meaningless copy number variation. When chromosome was performed and all this mess was seen, it was detected a uh, balanced translocation, balanced translocation, where a gene, the Marfan gene, was split into half. So if you want to get a complete diagnosis for any condition, you should have both chromosomes and a ray. Without a chromosome analysis, this genetic test would result normal. To get a complete diagnosis, chromosome analysis, Smith array if possible, but there could be also the need for the next generation sequencing, analyzing genes on the non deleted chromosome and the new technique, optical genomic uh, mapping, uh, is also useful. 
but of course you don't ask for all these uh, ex expensive uh, genetic tests if there is no need. Why, when do you need more detailed tests? Especially when a critical evaluation of the phenotype tells you that there is something that doesn't fit. Too severe, too uh, mild, or additional phenotype, a uh, technical update is needed. What is mosaic? Mosaic is when you have a portion of cells are normal and some cells are deleted. So I, there are clones of cells are normal and uh, some cells are deleted. These are due to, um, since the, the sample we take when we make an analysis, we may take only the normal cells or only the abnormal cells. And anyway, if somebody tells you that this is a mosaic with few cells, abnormal cells, doesn't mean the child has few abnormal cells. There are few abnormal cells in the sample. Or if they say there are many abnormal cells, the, the child is not necessarily strongly affected because there, are, there is a sample test in many abnormal cells. The child may have few. What is mosaicism? It starts after the zygote, after the cell, the, the first cell starts dividing, the earlier the mutation starts, the more the cells that contain the mutation are there because if among four cells one is mutated a quarter of cells of this uh, boy or uh, female would be affected if it happens later on the number of abnormal cells will be less and so the mosaicism will be mild this is a lady who had uh, uh, mosaicism, and she had, the, this is not Jacobson, she had two children with the same abnormality. We found after analyzing 300 cells from her blood, because she always turned normal. So what is Jacobson? It's a chromosomal disorder, it's a genomic disorder uh, on, the clinic, on the genetic basis. On clinical is a multiple congenital abnormality, mental retardation, and is a continuous gene syndrome. It's a syndrome due to chromosome imbalance involving a specific chromosome region. It's not a gene disorder. I want to stress this because whenever I speak to people, they ask me how many gene, genes my child is missing doesn't matter because many genes uh, don't give straightforward a clinical condition. Uh, on chromosome 11, there are many, many genes, hundreds of genes, but as far as we know, there is well, this play one that gives straightforward phenotype. A recessive disorder, both copies must be affected. One may be missing, both may be missing. One is missing, one is abnormal, but they must be affected both. On a dominant disorder, only one copy is to be affected. But it's not always by missing that the gene is affected. The, the gene is abnormal, one copy is additional, one copy is missing. In these two conditions, is when the dosage of the gene must be that, cannot be lower, cannot be higher. But this not, is not true for all the genes. Only few have a dosage effect. All the recessive genes are 
one of those dependence because you can miss one and have no problem. Okay. So it's not a single gene disorder and it's not a collection of disorders. It's something more complex. If it was a single gene disorder, all patients would have the same strength phenotype. Because the load or same. There is missing one copy. <laughs> Hundreds of genes are in this copy. But we know that bleeding, low platelet is the only consistent phenotype we see. Doesn't mean that the other genes do nothing. They contribute to the phenotype. But you must remember that if one copy is missing, there is the other one. So if the mother is given the deleted chromosome, the father is given the other chromosome, and all the genes on 11Q in the miss region missing from the mother, the same the mother, uh, all these genes are alone to fight the battle of life. So they must be good. They are not always. Our contiguous genes in Rome is when a fragment of chromosome containing a number of genes all the genes are contiguous across to the other, one to the other. And uh, the clinical picture is always hypnotic feature, a phase, intellectual disability, physical developmental delay, organ malformation. And this is specific on the region that is missing, or if there is a trisomy, on the region that is duplicated. The larger, the fragments. This most rare is the phenotype, but there is a wide variability of the phenotype altogether. Um, this is Ossetia Tuspati, as professor in Pavia. She uh, made all the array mapping in our children, and we must thank her because she has done it without asking for the money for the technical. She has done for me and for you. And uh, uh, we found that each case has a single uh, individual breakpoint, almost each case. Even if there are two or three that have the same number there, when we went to, into detail, we found that each case is different. Even in this case, this is my third patient. This was, she was born on the 28th of December, 1990. <laughs> and uh, she was my first patient. She was obviously um, dysmorphic. And she had a wide division element. The same period, there is the uh, pedigree down. I had a family where a, a woman uh, and the, her my husband had three children with a fragile chromosome 11 that was considered a normal variant. But chance, this is my friend. She's, uh, she was from Birmingham and she was studying the number of chromosomes together with Cutterson in the early 50s when the number of chromosomes was detected. But she also studied meiosis. I was in her lab for almost two years. She came to visit me in my house and she told me that Chris Jones and Alan Tunnadi we're studying the fragile chromosome 11. So we found that the three children had fragile chromosome 11 because the mother was carrying a fumigation. And we also found that the mother of the deleted girl had a fumigation. I have checked the mother for um, fragile 11 
Vygotsky was a um, radio uh, radiologist. I thought she was exposed to radiations, she might say, but I didn't find the fragile side because the way how to study was on molecular basis, not on chromosome basis. All the papers that have come afterwards, I have never seen anybody using molecular tests. So when they say there is no fragile site, I don't believe. And also, um, we, they made me go to, to France, where there was a meeting on 11Q, and I found Paul, who invited me to the United States. And the story is this. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the fragile site, what happens? Uh, the chromosome is broken, is broken. And then uh, it must be healed, otherwise cannot give further cells, cannot re replicate. And it heals after a while. So as happens to you or Nate, if you don't repair this soon, the break will be larger. So people who have a fragile site don't have to have the same break point. It depends how long the cell takes to repair. Predisposing factors are fragile sites, but also variants that say Mosasi. Uh, Orsetta Zuffati, who is retired, is still working on the chromosome abnormality, and she is seeing that some abnormal chromosomes are preserved because in that chromosome there is a variant that makes the life of the chromosome stronger. So we are studying this. Anyway, this is the breakpoint on 11Q. And look at these three cases. Each one is a case, each line is a case. And uh, uh, the blue one, one with the interstitial deletion, the deletion that does not include the oh, does not include the the bottom, the bottom is red, is preserved, but he has Jacobson. And then there is a, a the second uh, blue arrow uh, indicates a girl that has the full phenotype, everything in Jacobson, and she has a small deletion. The bottom is lost. And this is a girl who has only this lost, and she has no Jacobson. So we know that Jacobson syndrome is included between this and this region. If the, the deletion is wider, there are more clinical findings. If the deletion is less, there are less clinical findings. And if the deletion is above or below this region, the, the phenotype will be different. Okay? So, 11Q doesn't mean Jacobson. It depends on the region. It could be a terminal. Terminal doesn't mean that it's to end, but it's at the end of chromosome. And interstitial is in between. Now, you can see that I, I wanted to hide the faces because it can go through online and without any problem. But there are, the white have a more uh, clear phenotype, the smallest deletion has very little phenotype. But you can see this one is that has a full phenotype. She has a submitted face, double kidney, and everything, everything in Jacobs. But you see this one, this one, this one, with a wider deletion, they look much less affected in the face. And uh, 
Okay. Let's go. Expression is variable. It depends on the region, on the size of the gene involved. If they are in mosaic or in mosaic condition, if there is an additional imbalance, and also a positional effect. Uh, and also genetic compound. What is the non deleted chromosome there? And uh, the other chromosome. The chromosome 11 is one, there are other 40, 40 45 chromosomes, a couple of them. So contiguous genes, what is on, on the non deleted chromosome? What is on the other chromosomes? And also environment can be a contribution. Both is not a, a single gene disorder or a, a, some a, a collection of single gene disorders. Both parents contribute to the same time. The history is usually sporadic, the recurrence is rare, but prenatal diagnosis should always be offered. There are families with low risk where both parents have normal karyotypes. High risk when one parent Jacobson, mosaic Jacobson, carrier of a balanced translocation. But there are high risk parents that don't, don't know. They may have shown normal chromosome, but one is mosaic or is a fragile site, or is a rescue of monosomy, or signs that something has happened on that chromosome. If you see it, look at families, when a family, both parents normal, one single person affected, recurrence risk should be low, especially if you go analyzing large part of the family and see nothing is wrong. But if you start seeing miscarriages in the family, miscarriages, something may be there. And if you see two cases in a family, of course, this one is in between. She must have a balanced translocation. Or on the other side of the family, this patient must have a balanced translocation. If you find a family where two children have the same condition, one of the two parents must have a balanced translocation. Um, so either one parent has a balanced rearrangement or is a mosaic or is a fragile site. And this is uh, must be told to other relatives that may be at risk. When the father is carrier of a balanced translocation, the risk for recurrence is lower because the father makes many sperms, some of abnormal. The ones that run faster are the normal ones, usually. While when the mother is carrier of balanced translocation, the mother has one egg at a time. Can be normal, can not, can be abnormal. The risk is higher. Parental analysis should be done with chromosome and fish because a ray is not able to be balanced translocations. But if the child has some boost, variance of unknown significance, the, the parental array should be done because if the boost, the variant, is meaningless, is usually, usually transmitted by one parent. If you don't find the boost in one parent, you a bell rings. Okay. Ideally, if parents have normal stereotypes, they should be tested for mosaicism or for fragile sites, but fragile sites not with cytogenetic techniques.
Any results require the critical evaluation of the phenotype and technical update to have precise identification of the clinical findings, more detailed diagnosis, more information with regard to the other family, the other member of the family. Sure. What happens during uh, the, the pregnancy of uh, Jacobson? In two thirds of the cases, there are no problems. In one third, there are the usual problems of any pregnancy. This, Threatens uh, abortion, preterm, abnormality of placenta, polyamnios, high maternal pressure, low growth of the fetus. Prenatal diagnosis with screening test usually is normal. So the only way to get a real diagnosis is via array, because even amniocentesis with chromosome test in some cases has turned normal because small divisions are not seen. NIT, non-invasive prenatal from maternal blood is not diagnosis, is a screening test. At birth, you have a small baby with a small fit face, heart malformation, bleeding, pyloric stenosis, feeding problems, pulmonary problems. Of course, you may not have all of these data. You may have some of these findings. But at any age, at the diagnosis, the baby must be checked by all the specialists, clinical geneticists, and a pediatrician or a GP, a medical general medical doctor. Any part of the body could be interested. The cardiologist, the pediatric physician, would, uh, would see phys physical development if there are malformations, if there is difficulty swallowing, vomiting, and constipation. Hematologist or immunologist would see low platelets, low blood cells, white blood cells, anemia sometimes, low blood uh, B T cells, immunoglobulin. Cardiologists would look for cardiac congenital malformation, but also acquired malformation, of it, such as coarctation of the aorta is not always congenital, big artery for coarctation and blood pressure. The neurologist should check for the developmental delay, mental disability, autism, brain malformation, seizure. And the endocrinologist for low hormones, ophthalmologist, tosis, strabismus, vascular anomaly of the retina, coloboma of the iris, uh, and autorenal laryngologist, narrow ear, ear tube, ear infection, deafness, cleft palate, the dermatologist, dry skin, eczema infections, and uh, EG, heart scan, uh, MRI, um, abdomen scan, x-ray, should be done at least once, and then in the follow-up, blood test for complete genetical assessment to update blood, immunity, endocrinology, routine test, urine test. And the follow-up must be uh, tailored according to what has been found that heart scan every year, abdomen scan every two years, and all the others when is required. Blood test with blood cell platelets, routine test, urine on when it is well. Children have this disproportionate growth. Many are below the third centile. Some are at about 10, 25 to 50 centile. Some are tall. So the ones that would need further information are the very short ones and the very tall ones. Very short ones because they may have low growth hormone. The very tall ones 
because there may be some part of the syndrome missing, which is interesting. And what about head? Head. The head is large. Is usually large uh, as compared to the height. But some children have very small head. And some children have very large head. The, the, the extreme. So those may have something different. Very, very small and very tall head should do MRI. If you see seizure or iris coloboma, I usually find uh, additional chromosome abnormality. Uh, pulmonary infection of wards, there is a serious immune disorder. Small or large brain, there may be a brain malformation, very short stature, low hormones. And fibronocephaly might be wise to operate soon to allow the brain growth. And so the same for ptosis, if it's severe, doesn't allow the child to start walking easily, it may help to have uh, early intervention. About 90% of children have at least one, but many more than one uh, surgery, heart, skull, pyloric stenosis, eye, ear tubes. Uh, complications are not very frequent, especially if you know about uh, Jacobson and prevent bleeding. And anesthesia uh, is uh, difficult because of the throat is narrow, it needs a special tube, but there may be pneumonia. In the majority of cases, there are good relapse, uh, results. There may be relapse in the ptosis specialty uh, intervention, and there may, may be abnormal scar. Life threatening pathologies are heart failure, bleeding, mm -hmm. infection. And this is to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to see you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is my landscape. Mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. oh, city group. <laughs> Quick question and one of the curiosity. Um, when I, I had my amniocentesis, it was in 95, and they just looked for three things, so that it wasn't detected. But I did have a uh, alpha uh, keto protein test prior to that that didn't come back. Alpha keto protein is uh, it is uh, uh, abnormal when there is a neurotube disorder. When there's a new neural tube disorder, the neural I just know I didn't know that. Um, okay. Spina bifida, oh, okay. Okay. Well, it came back mm -hmm. not in the, uh, the normal range. The normal range, but nobody explained. No, no. I, did, I don't think there was any connection. Okay. Uh, they are screening tests. In the majority of cases, uh, help you what to do next. Uh, or, uh, uh, scan, uh, a scan to see the, the bone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Are there many in your case files with the lower two disorders? No. You have the two chops in the back of the painful spinal You have? Yeah. There are some with um, uh, with carry. Time, which means underneath the bone, the, the bones are not in the source. question then. And, um, it's just on then. genetic testing. So if you were going to do updated genetic testing, is there a certain lab or place that y'all recommend that's like, I mean, I think they tend to send the Mayo Clinic. Uh, where are you based? I'm in Houston, so it's Houston, Texas. Houston. We should have all the best uh, genetic uh, facilities. Yes, we should. Uh, I think it's that uh, 
if it's not yeah. appropriate, they will charge you if you ask. So I must know the story, uh, how useful could we be for you as to have more advanced. Uh, yesterday I saw somebody, they had a, a child with a unbalanced translocation from inherited. So we know that it's sure that is the anomalous malady. But if we have some question mark, so even if you have already done, better to look into. I think in uh, in Germany, very I, I saw many with the but uh, the lesion and replication, and with boost. How do how do you promise on Sunday? I don't know if I can talk about. Yeah. Oh. oh, me. Please. Okay. <laughs> we have a question online. Um, what about melanomas? How, how, um, I guess, I frequent are melanomas? Connection. No connection with melanomas. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she's a person that you all know, most of you know. Uh, there is a girl with a duplication of chromosome in the MQ, a wide duplication, and the clinical uh, syndrome of a duplication. I saw her at Luther's meeting and more recently, I saw her again, and I got blood, and the Orzeta Zuccati made us the array. Turn, she, she was a mosaic duplication normal. When Orzeta gave me the result, she said she had a deletion, a small deletion. I said, no, you got it wrong again. Do again the test. The test was done again, again, deletion. I can explain. The girl, as a child, had two types of cells, duplicated and deleted. The deleted was missed on chromosome test because it wasn't small. So they said it was duplicated normal. And I had the, the, the photo, so I, I saw when the girl was uh, afterwards was um, how do you say older? When she was older, she had missed all the duplicated cells. They were not there anymore. It was a mosaic. The only cell left were the deleted ones. This happens. There is a syndrome that is. Uh, Double chromosome 12p is mosaic. Unless you do the diagnosis before the, the, the person is one year old, you don't see the chromosome anymore. The abnormal chromosome is lost because the cells are not viable. So even if you have a, a genetic diagnosis, you must check with the clinic. If I hadn't had the photo of the karyotype, I could publish a patient with clinical trisomy 11 and division 11Q. Okay. I finished. Any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay.